Okay, so today we're going to solve quadratic equations that uh, end with imaginary roots. So I'd like you to give the try this a try. So put me on pause and then come back. Okay, so let's see. We have the square root of negative 9. So the square root of 9 is 3, and the negative becomes an i, so that's 3i. All right, and then we have the square root of negative 75. So the negative is going to become an i, the square root of 75. So we have the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. So that's 5i, the square root of 3. All right, now dividing. So remember, you want to be able to make a heart. <laughs> so what number goes into 8, 10, and 4? That's 2. 2 goes into 8 4 times, into 10 5 times, and into 4 2 times. So it would be 4 plus 5i all over 2. And remember, this can be represented like this, 4 over 2 plus 5i over 2. And then it could be written like this, since 4 divided by 2 is 2, plus 5 halves i. All right, so now let's talk about solving quadratics. Now, we've, we've solved quadratics before. This time, they're just going to end in uh, imaginary numbers. So always remember, your quadratics have to be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. You can either use the um, complete the square or you could use the quadratic formula. So you have to start learning how to decipher which way is the best, which formula is the best way to solve a quadratic. Sometimes complete the square, even though you guys don't like to um, use completing the square. Sometimes it is the best way to solve a quadratic because it's easier. All right, so remember, quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2i. All right, let's take a look at number one. Okay, so I look at number one. It says x squared minus 8x plus 20 equals 0. So you have to decide. Now, I've, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how to figure out how which one's the best way. There is already a leading coefficient of a 1, and my middle term is even. So what we would want to do is use the complete the square for this because of the 1 in front and the middle term is even. It'll, it's quicker to do it that way than it is to use the quadratic formula. So we will have to minus 20 first. So it's x squared minus 8x is equal to negative 20. And now we do half of b, which is negative 8. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Square it, you get 16, and then you're going to add that to both sides of the equation. So we get x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals negative 20 plus 16. And negative 20 plus 16 is negative 4. And now we're going to factor this left side. You two sets of parentheses, remember it's x and x, and remember the number that goes in here is always the number that you got when you did half of b. When I did half of b, I got negative 4. So that means it's going to be negative 4 inside here. So I have two of the same parentheses, so it's x minus 4 squared equals negative 4. To get rid of the square, you square root both sides. The square root takes care of the square, so I get x minus 4 equals. Don't forget the plus minus, and then the square root of negative 4 is 2i, and everything's behind the plus minus. Now I add 4 to both sides, so I get x equals 4 plus minus 2i. And remember, there are two roots here. One of my roots is 4 plus 2i, and the other root is 4 minus 2i. All right, so now let's take a look at number 2. All right, so number two, we have um, uh, 4x times x minus 2 plus 6 equals 0. So we want to distribute first. So 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 2 is negative 8x plus 6 equals 0. So notice that in the front, I do have a 4. And in order to complete the square, we would have to have a 1. And if I divide everything by 4, 
that would be okay here. If I divide by four, it's okay here, but then I'm gonna get a fraction here. So completing the square is not the best way here because of the fraction that we would end up with. So we are going to use the quadratic formula. So a is four, b is negative eight, and c is six. Quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we get x equals opposite what b is here. So we get 8 plus minus the square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 times 4 times 6 over 2 times 4. So we get x equals 8 plus minus some radical over 8. So what I want you to do is plug this what's under the radical into your calculator, not the radical, just what's under it, the negative 8 squared. Make sure you're using parentheses around that negative 8. Minus 4 times 4 times 6, and you get negative 32. Okay, so I'm just going to move everything up a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so now I need to simplify the square root of negative 32, so I'm going to do that on the side. So the negative becomes i. What perfect square goes into 32? So that negative becomes i. What perfect square goes into 32? 16 and 2. The square root of 16 is 4, so it's 4i, the square root of 2. So let's rewrite this. x equals 8 plus minus 4i, the square root of 2, over 8. All right, we're going to want to make a heart, see what we can do here. What goes into the 8, 4, and 8? That would be 4. So 4 goes into 8 twice, into 4 once, and into 8 twice. So we have 2 plus or minus i, the square root of 2, over 2. And remember, there's other ways to write this. Oops, sorry. So we could split it up. It would be 2 over 2 plus or minus i, the square root of 2, over 2. And then this could reduce here to 1 x equals 1 plus minus, and remember there's really 1, so it's 1 half i, the square root of 2. Those are all the same answer, okay? And of course it could be separated to x equals 1 plus 1 half i, the square root of 2, and x equals 1 minus 1 half i, the square root of 2. All right, so uh, that's it, and we will practice more in class tomorrow. Have a good night.